Let's talk first. We just walked through kind of the current state of play. We know that Ukraine has been struggling a little bit in uh, this counteroffensive to find some momentum. Mm -hmm. How, why do you think that is? And can you kind of walk us through it? Sure, absolutely. Well, Jessica, one of the big problems is is that everything kind of stayed static for about eight months mm -hmm. uh, in this in this war. So the last eight months before the Ukrainians moved on their counteroffensive, the Russians were able to dig in into this area right in through here. So all of this area, think of it as being heavily mined, heavily entrenched with lots of trenches. Plus, you have those dragon's teeth uh, tank traps that are there. So all of this, and think of this not only as one layer, but at least as a double, and in some cases, a triple layer right in through this area. Extremely hard to get through and extremely difficult because when you look at the way these, this front line actually is set up, you see so many different areas where there are geographic vulnerabilities, but also every time that there's something like this, the Russians just have to step back a bit and keep the Ukrainians at bay. That's right, so why they, these things are, are so important at this point no, in time. No, it does help to kind of see it like that. And we know, too, that Ukraine has been asking for better air power for a long time, and they really want those F-16 fighter jets. Uh, the White House is saying that's still on the table, but they are warning about the amount of training that it's going to take to be able to fly these. Um, what is it that makes them different from what the Ukrainians are used to? So what the Ukrainians are used to are the MiG-29s and the Su-27s, both of them Russian-made aircraft, and the ones that the Ukrainians have are actually from the Soviet Union era, so they're really old. old yeah. uh, now, the F-16 can be old, too. I mean, it was started, in, but basically it got its start in the 1980s uh, in terms of operational use. But the key difference is this. Look at this cockpit right here. Everything here is digital. This is a heads-up display that the pilot gets so he doesn't have to, he or she doesn't have to look down uh, if they are engaged with, an, mm -hmm. with a target. Uh, they can see the target area that they're going after. They can get the radar pictures as they need them. And it's fairly easy to control, but you need to get used to it. Compare that to the MiG-29. This is what the Ukrainians are flying now. It's all analog. All of wow. this is yeah. completely different. This is like going back into the 1970s or before. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very different to go from this to this. Totally. No, I mean, that. even to a lay person like me, I can understand how very different that is. And before we let you go, I also want to talk to you about drones, sure. um, because those have been such a key part of this war. And Russia claims there's been several drone attacks by Ukraine Sunday. And this is, researchers say, Russia's making its own version of an Iranian-made drone. Um, what do you make of the use of drones in this conflict? This is one of the most revolutionary aspects of this war. So every war has something different added to it. And in this particular case, drones like this, uh, you know, in some cases you could say, well, I can pick this up at the local hobby store and build something like this. Well, the Ukrainians are doing it and they're creating these, basically they're out of a suitcase mm -hmm. and you can launch them fairly easily by hand uh, and you can get intercept, you can intercept uh, signals from them, you can intercept uh, pictures, you can do all kinds of things. So it's an intelligence gatherer as well as a weapons delivery platform. So you have that plus you also have the ability of the Ukrainians to go into uh, the Black Sea using seaborne drones to attack Russian naval bases in this area and of course the Kerch Bridge right here, mm -hmm. uh, the bridges here. All of these are vulnerable to drone attacks, either airborne or seaborne drones, depending on where the target is. So drones are important and they're going to set the stage for the next chapter of this war, mm -hmm. as well as subsequent conflicts that are coming up at some time in the right. future. No doubt about it. And the fact that they're unmanned too exactly. is huge. And that's important. One other quick thing on this, uh, the fact that they're unmanned is critical because Ukraine has a real disparity in population compared to Russia. They need as many unmanned platforms that they can effectively employ in any of these areas. They must have those and they must use them effectively in order to achieve a force multiplying effect. Yeah, really critical for them. All right, Colonel, it's always great to see you. Thanks.